scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Being used by God is more than just being, is more than surrender. Surrender is important, but it does not stop at surrender. You must die. It's a condition that not even Jesus escaped. The price for life is death. The price for the throne is the cross. It's non-negotiable. There are no sentiments attached to it. Now, this is the kind of that sometimes our generation does not like to listen. And sometimes it, it is because, you know, in an attempt to bring balance to our theological understanding and our exegesis of scripture. Sometimes we move in the flesh and we begin to just push everything left, right and center. Listen, when people talk, look at their results first. It is important for you to know this. The price, the first key is death. When Solomon was about to dedicate the temple, Listen, the Bible says that there was a sacrifice already upon the altar. Are we together? And then Solomon began to make a covenant. And he said, oh God, arise, come to your resting place. That if anyone turned to the temple in need for help, let the covenant speak. And then the Bible says, the fire came, the Shekinah of God came upon that temple. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech thee brethren, this is Paul mentoring the church in Rome, part of his apostolic ministry. I beseech thee brethren, he says, by the mercies of God that ye offer not your spirit, not your mind, your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Not just your act of worship. That means your act of worship that can touch God. Your body. There are certain things about death that we must understand. Number one, a dead man does not respond. A dead man has no ego to protect. For as long as you are alive in yourself, something about your flesh will interrupt the program of God. It has nothing to do with being good or being bad. It has everything to do with being human. That the reality of our humanity has a way of interrupting God's program. No man can endure pain indefinitely. No man can endure embarrassment indefinitely. No man can endure discomfort indefinitely. So the moment you are alive, one day you will react. And you may react just when the program of God is about entering a new season. So God will not take chances. You will die as the journey starts. Death. The grave is a mysterious place. We fear it. But there is a dimension of the grave that we need because it is where death ends and where resurrection starts. They all happen in the grave. There are many times that God allows, let me tell you one of God's technology for bringing death to you. He will allow what you fear to come upon you. Now I know you don't like what I'm saying, 
it does not destroy you. Isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. And then verse 2 says, When thou passest through waters, I will be with you. Not I will take you out of it. I will be with you. There are times that he takes you out of it, but there are times that he walks with you. Both of them are called deliverance. You need to learn. <laughs> Please keep that scripture. 43 and verse 2. It says, when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through fire. It's amazing that when it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk slowly. Because there is something the fire needs to do in your life. When you walk through fire, you don't run through it. You walk through fire. And as it burns your ego, as, as the prophecies of your enemies seem to come to pass, and it's as if God is not watching. God, I thought you would come through for me to shame them. And God says there is a bigger agenda than proving a point. Stay on course. We are talking about something generational, not some mundane family crisis. We are talking about carrying mantles, not for a church, not for a city for a generation David is running away from Saul because Saul is looking for him not knowing that this young boy this runaway boy would later not only become the king of Israel but answer the name that will birth the Christ but he's in a cave called Adullam what is a king doing in a cave let me tell you this, hear me. Just help those under the anointing. Listen to me. I wish I can tell you everything will happen overnight. Not everything in this kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. If everything is a gift, what is the reward for obedience? Not everything is a gift. No, there are rewards in this kingdom. It is why all men are not the same. Please hear me. I don't know how to make you believe this. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But by reason of God's predetermined counsel, alongside our various depths of sacrifices, we have been separated into spiritual cadres. Not all things are possible for everybody. There are people whose life has become an altar and a covenant. The, the covenant has implications. Elijah loves heaven. There are 7,000 other prophets. Don't you think they were praying, God, don't mind that prophet, open the heavens. And God says, I'm doing business with this man at another level. Your sacrifice can make God brand his dealings with you. Give it a name. Many people walked with God in the Bible, but not all were called the God of this. There were people who walked with God. He named himself after his experience with them. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mouth of lions. Death. Death to your ego. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, right now, I'm not living for myself again. Anybody can think what he thinks about me. It is no longer about the preaching. Listen, the secret to be in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on his presence. When you die enough to love him, love him more than ego, love him more than money, this adventure of using God to be successful, this adventure of using God to get anointing, just because you think it's anointing, God is not that foolish. Until all of you desires all of him, you will not find him. Let me show you the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Please do not forget this for as long as you live. I call it the law of encounter. And ye shall seek me and only find me when ye search for me with all your heart. Everybody says all your heart. That means if you seek God and you don't find him, the diagnosis is that something about you has been lying to you. It's not all of you that is looking for him. And you don't have to be bad for this to happen. Remember, we're not talking about good and bad. We're talking about the humanity of man. 
I know you came from a background where no one succeeded. And so the pressure is on you to make it. I know you are human. But unfortunately, God does not work that way. A woman wants a child to prove to her stepwife, Penina, that she's not barren. And God says, if that is why you want a child, you will not hear from me. In spite of Hannah's mocking, I mean Penina's mocking Hannah, you, you thought God would say, okay, let, let's prove a point. There are times that the agenda is bigger than proving a point. And if the goal, your object of receiving spiritual thing is so they will know, God says, that's too small. You must give me a reason that is generational. Is God blessing us this afternoon? Death. The heart of man, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 and 10. God himself, vetting the heart of man, told us something that we must never forget. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Do you know how many deceitful things we have in this life? And yet the Bible says the heart is more deceitful than death. That means even the owner of the heart can be deceived by the heart is carrying. The heart is so deceitful it can deceive you, the owner of the heart. It says who can know it? This is the reason why we need to die. This is how God operates. Verse 10. I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That means while I kneel down and say, Oh God, visit me, increase my church. And while I'm rolling on the ground, he's not just seeing my rolling, he goes to my... Remember, his word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. He's seeing that in spite of my rolling on the ground, the truth is that I, I saw a ministerial colleague that we started ministry with, and I saw the expansion in his church, and sincerely, in the name of honesty, my humanity just came up and said, I'm Mr. Man, you've been in this city for many years, what are you doing? And that was the premise of my 40 days fast. And from day one, the fast, it will not be useless, but it will not be used for what you think it will be used for. It will rather be used to align your spirit to see what is wrong, not to give you membership. I hope you still love me. It's amazing how believers are distracted because of little things. It's proof that we're alive in ourselves. He didn't call me apostle. He didn't invite me here. I've noticed this person looks down on me. All these things are proof that you are alive. I'm not saying to dishonor people. No, not at all. But there is a way you can so die that you lose. You are, you, your eyes have been set like a flint. There are some things that do not have power within your environment again. God can give you a billion naira now and say give it and you are not buying and casting and say Lord if you are the one let the wind blow to the left all those things are proof of unbelief it's, it's proof that you are alive in yourself you see Ba this money we are looking for that distracts us did you know the last treasure that Jesus had failed him he's still searching for a replacement till today so the, the dimension of wealth that people talk about that makes them, people have not even seen the wealth that is coming to the church. And I mean it truly speaking. But the person who will be God's treasurer in this generation must be the person who, whether God keeps his blessings in the storehouse or in your life, it must be the same for him. The reason why you love, listen, please help those under the anointing. The reason why, look at me, the reason why you trust your bank is ease of withdrawal. I hope you know. The reason why you trust your bank is because you can slot an ATM anytime. When you become that ATM to God, you will never be empty. I just failed to say that. Death. 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 Only dead vessels carry God. The size of God is too heavy for you to carry while you are alive. It will kill you. Only dead men can carry God. 
You want to carry the grace and the anointing that brings a generation under the submission of Christ. Please hear me. It is going to take more than posters and billboards. It is going to take more than intelligent speaking. It's going to take more than theological exegesis and your ability to communicate well. There is a track record in the spirit. There is a signature that is only signed with blood. A proof of death. It is at that point you will file your name in the realm of the spirit. Jesus I know. Paul, I know. You write your name. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. Here is my scar. I went through it. I went through it. Demons will not just listen to you just because you saw it in the Bible that they shall come. You try it. The sons of Sceva tried it, did they? We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Jesus whom Paul preaches, the real Jesus. And yet the spirit did not shout and say, ah, Jesus. Even Jesus was talking to Satan. Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, 40 days fasting. He's talking with Satan and Satan is not shaking. Satan is saying, let me hold you and take you to a mountain. So what is Satan really afraid of? Jesus, the word, the logos of God, filled with the spirit of God without measure, with fasting on top, is talking with Satan. The word is now spoken and yet Satan is not running. Find out what he really is afraid of so that we don't make a fool of ourselves. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. oh, oh. It all belongs to you. Listen, I told God anything I cannot give you in this life, may it never come. And I'm saying it as I'm standing here. If the Lord asks me to stop ministry now, I stand by the God of heaven. I'm speaking. I know that they are recording this. I will never carry a mic again till Jesus comes. I love him more than ministry. I love him more than titles. Don't allow men clap you out of the will of God. You must sustain the grace and the hunger. Please hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. This is not preaching, you know. This is not. I'm, I'm speaking from the. You know, sometimes when we see people who God has dropped his hand upon them, sometimes we need to be open like this to say this thing so you will get it. Don't let fame. Fame can be deceptive. People can clap their hands, you know. When I was coming in, thank God for your wonderful protocol people. I saw everybody running around and some of you were holding cameras. I said, ha ah. ha. Oh God, that great man is still your boy. Still your boy. Still your boy. He's somebody's father, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's mentor, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's role model, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's hero, but he's still your boy. The day you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit and pride gives you an award for completion, that day you begin to die immediately, no matter who you are. The day your knees becomes too far from the ground, that is the day your crown will fall from your head. I tell you this. This is the mystery behind the destruction of the great. This is why people start well and don't finish well. It's not sin that destroys people. It's not just fornication that destroys people. It's not just all these demonic things. No, the mercy of God is still there. It's the rebellion of rejecting the secret place. That's where people die. That's where people stay and are destroyed. They clap you out of his presence and you cannot die. Please listen to what I am telling you. Because there are people, this is why you came here today. Leave, forget man of God, woman of God. Thank God for that. But it's time, somewhere in this service, we are going to cry before God. 
and say, Lord, this is no longer a puzzle. This is your boy. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. He says, search my heart. Lord, search me. I'm not ashamed of what you will find. If you find lost, say I'm not ashamed. I will say I'm a big man. If you find lost, kill it before a generation kills me for it. If you find pride, I'm not ashamed when I stand before you. I know I'm a great musician. I know I'm a great man, but I come to you. May your all-seeing eye search my heart, search my motive. Live ministry, live preaching, live singing. Focus on me. Listen. You can be fasting as a man of God. That fasting is, complete, is almost wasted. You can go to God as a colleague trying to get one or two things. The anointing for the season with your hand in your pocket. Let me tell you the truth. You need to understand that although we are one with Christ, our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. And there are times you need to join the 20 and 4 elders. Take away your golden crown and join them to lie down and cry, Kadosh, holy, holy. Carry the grace for a generation. It is more than just fasting. It is more than just praying. It is death. Where you are not ashamed of whatever God finds. People can be clapping for you. And God says no. In the last two weeks pride is growing in you. Lust is growing in you. In the last two weeks bitterness. You, you are. Uh, no, 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 no. Walk on it and you get down on your knees quickly. And say Lord I'm not ashamed. What is there to be ashamed of? beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice. It was Apostle John who was teaching us in 1 John chapter 2. He started from verse 15 and he said love not the world look up please. Neither the things that are in the world love not the world. He's teaching us friendship with God and he says love not the world. He says neither the things that are in the world it says, if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That word is the word eros. It's an affinity that can distract your passion. The jealousy of God necessitates that he becomes the object of your passion. Alone and at all times. Love not the world. The cosmos has a seduction to it. Money has a seduction to it. Fame has a seduction to it. Are we together? Every good thing has a seductive component to it. And it is only death that can immune you. Especially in the generation that we live. Please hear what? Don't pretend you are not hearing me. Oh, this is the voice of God. If you want to last. If you want to stand strong. You must forget about some of these paraphernalia of ministry and be true with God and be true to God and say help me don't let it, forget the ignorant the people will talk about you and say things don't mind them leave them do your business with God because when you are tried like that refiner's fire then you will come out with a dimension of grace and glory that people will look and say from whence come at this and God will say this is what I can make out of men who die 
See, let me tell you this. Please look up. There are three levels of anointings. And I, I think I should just digress a bit to share this. We'll find somewhere to pray. Number one, there is the anointing that comes upon you as a believer. The Bible lets us know that there is an anointing that indwells a believer on account of his being grafted into Christ. Are we together now? Yes. Number two, there is the anointing that comes upon you on account of the office that you occupy, which represents the ministerial allocation given to you as far as God's program is concerned. He will empower you. But number three, there is the anointing that comes to you as a reward for understanding what God is doing in every season. That is the anointing that can come upon a man by reason of what you represent as far as the now speakings of God is concerned. I can be anointed as far as the office I occupy is concerned. And yes, not carry the anointing for the season. This is why you find certain people in very relevant and then certain seasons just fade them out. It's not necessarily backsliding. It's that the anointing for what God is doing now, now, what he is, not what he did, but what he is doing now, was not there. Death. 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 Show me a man that has mastered the art of being open to God. No matter what you say about that man, you are wasting your time. A broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou. So when it comes and finds strength in yourself, it will go back. There is nothing for it to do in your life. Hear me, let me speak to someone. The strength of God does not look for strength. The strength of God looks for weakness. So the quicker you acknowledge your weakness, the more you invite his strength. Lord, I don't know what my tendencies are outside of your grace and your help. And so I cry that your strength will come. And people see you rise and stand with an agency that is not human. Are we together? Yes. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. More than fasting. More than praying. Thank God for all of those other things. But they are completely vain if you don't die. No impartation will cover for death. No amount of seed will cover for death. No amount of kingdom service will cover for death. You don't die as husband and wife. No, when it has to do with the secret place, it is he, not them. It's a personal affair. You can encourage one another until you get there. And it's the deal. Hallelujah. Only dead men can carry God. The Spirit of God continues to echo the burden of the Spirit. It is not as if certain graces cannot be made affordable and available in the body. But let me tell you this. The price that it takes to receive that, not many people are willing to stay. There is a rush for manifestation. There is a rush to be known. There is a rush to be recognized. And these things is, is something that is intrinsic in us. But God must find people who say, Lord, if it means me standing back and nobody will see me for you to be glorified, I am satisfied. And mean it genuinely. Not coming to tell lies on stage. Genuinely and truthfully. You know, let me tell you, truth has a presence. When you are a lover and a carrier of truth, when you speak, that spirit of truth backs what you are saying. I love him with all my heart. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty, O oh, morning star, you truly are everything. It's not a song, it's a revelation. 
It's a revelation. It's a revelation. It was Pastor Elijah that taught the body of Christ. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. That's the language of dead men. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Lay your hands on me, dear Lord. Breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, take your place, take your place. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, take your place. We're going to sing this song again, not as a special number. As you are saying, take your place. You know when the ark was going to be restored back, David danced, danced. Some of you need to say, look, this relationship, give way. God needs that space now to find his place. This obsession for ministry, obsession for expansion, as important as it is, can be a loss. He said, see then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that God easily beset us. And he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking forward and looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, the Bible says he despised the shame. God is looking for space in your life he is not one of the many things for don't say God is in my heart he's in your heart as number what he can be in your heart as number 35 he's not satisfied that I'm in your house does not mean I'm in your bedroom I can be in your house and I'm at the lounge somewhere I'm in your house but I'm not satisfied let me tell you this the jealousy of God fights anything that takes his place. Even if he's the one that gave you, he will fight it until he sits on his throne. Are we together? It is when that happens that your first prayer can now be an incense of worship. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. You see, the ministry of the Spirit, please listen, the ministry of the Spirit is such that you not only hear and learn, you become. And there is an agency, there is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that helps men become. As many as received Him, He gave them power to become. There is an ability. He says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror. He says, we are what? Changed. Changed into the image that we are seeing. I shared with you one key. Death. The second key. Hmm. Before I share this, I pray for you that you will never forget what I'm sharing now. The second key that a man must have to be mightily used by God is you must have an encounter with the body of Christ. Write it down. An encounter not just with the Holy Spirit, an encounter 
not just with the word of God, an encounter with the body of Christ. Very few believers understand this mystery that the body of Christ is a mystery. We understand an encounter. See, there are four levels of encounters that are revealed to us from scripture. I've done teachings on this. Number one, the nature of that is, look at me, let me have your attention. Do you know that the way God works is that because he is great and we cannot see all of him, he fragments himself to dimensions and allocates them on earth so that men can be recipients of his benevolence. Are we together? That means that every dimension of God that seeks to find expression in the earth, this is how it reaches the earth. Number one, God will find a man. Everybody say a man. God will enter a covenant with that man that becomes the platform for allowing that dimension of him to be hosted in the earth. Are we together now? And all through the lifetime of that man, he becomes God's official vehicle for partaking of that dimension of him. You will never partake of that dimension of God ignoring that man. He has by that covenant become a system. He's no longer a human being. He's a system that allows that program of God. Please understand what I teach you. Look up. On earth today, the spiritual system that handles the ordinance and the altar of faith is Kenneth Copeland. Start from any man of God that operates in faith. Eventually, you will arrive at that spiritual system. If Kenneth Copeland dies, I hope you know before it was in Hagen. Are we together now? When Hagen died, then it switched. If Kenneth Copeland goes to be with the Lord, because the program must be preserved by priesthood. And there must be a system that maintains it. Now watch this. You may listen to Kenneth Copeland and see him just teach generally. But ignore him and the system he represents. You will be surprised that the heavens, as far as faith is concerned, will be closed over you. In his lifetime, Billy Graham, watch this, carried that grace. Billy Graham was one of the few men that saw the man to leave him and he was still alive to watch it. That man too left and it was on Reinhard Bonke. Are we together now? Reinhard Bonke was not just an evangelist. Reinhard Bonke was the spiritual system that was responsible for drawing souls. That's why Reinhard Bonke can preach somewhere and someone who didn't attend the crusade will burn his chance. Is that evangelism? Watch this. The Bible says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the times so they knew what to do. We must master the art of reading the writings on the wall. Otherwise our ignorance will make us victims. I'm teaching on the encounter with the body of Christ. Benedi today is God's spiritual system for the release of God's anointing to heal. The healing ministry came right from Catherine Kuhlman to Ora Roberts to heal. Then heal. The living entity today that represents our spiritual system. You dishonor him in secret and in the open, you will never carry the healing anointing. It is not only God you honor, you must honor the spiritual system. This is where the arrogance of believers come in. It is not human worship. Is honor to the protocol. Remember, I started teaching by saying the glory of God comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept. So when God wants to bless you, he will not only visit you in the secret place, he will create an opportunity for an encounter with that living system. Now watch this. Now you will understand what I'm teaching. Jesus cannot start his program although he's the son of God. Then he hears that there is one wild man baptizing people in Jordan. Are we still together? I hope you know that man was his cousin. And he didn't say, oh, my cousin, we spoke when we were in the womb. No. He discerned that it was a young body carrying Elijah. Remember what I told you? Now watch this. The spirit of the Antichrist that was working in the scribes and the Pharisees came and started asking Elijah because you know the battle was to search for the seed of the woman 
And so the spirit of the Antichrist functioning through the scribes, they said, are you the one to come? Are you? And he said, I am the voice of one crying. What sort of confusion is this? Watch this. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. But baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. So every time John, watch this. Every time John pours water, he will look up. Nothing happens. He will say, go. So watch this. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Now, the Bible says, suddenly, they see this young, handsome, 30-year-old man who for 18 years, we don't know where he went to. The last time we heard of him, he was age 12. And for 18 years, where Jesus went to, we don't know. Herein is the mystery of saying people came out of nowhere. There is nobody who comes out of nowhere. When men are in their period of training, they are hidden. 18 years, we don't hear about Jesus again. The next time, is a 30 year old Jewish boy. Watch this. The moment John sees him, John was given a code in the wilderness that on whoever the Holy Spirit descends, that is the Christ of God. Are we together? Now, the point is that Jesus could not open his own heavens, even though he was the one. He needed to submit to the system that was at work. If Jesus ignored John, he would have been surprised. Ah, let's pray in the spirit for even if it's two minutes before we continue. Shali paru sabakatasha la gradebeketoch. Mantas kabara sabaru sete sheleba komtia. Brato shali brakato seleketa. Quicken my understanding, O God. Shilambras kataparato shelekete palatos. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Please sit down. Remember, this is a retreat. Don't forget why we're here. Are we together now? So Jesus comes and John, the spirit of Elijah, looks through the eyes of a body you call John and sees through the body of the one you call Jesus and sees the logos of God and says, Behold the Lamb. Look at the kind of speakings. Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus comes to be baptized. And John looks at him and says, I have seen who and what you are. I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. And Jesus makes a statement that is instructive. Suffer, permit it to be so. I cannot break the protocol, although I am the word. Suffer it to be so that all scripture, all scripture, all scripture and he submitted to the ministry and the grace of that spiritual system are we together i hope you know malachi chapter 4 tells us before the great and terrible day of the lord elijah will come now the lord is coming but elijah must precede him and he must acknowledge elijah and then he comes out of the waters and the Bible makes a fearful statement. And the heavens open. Over Jesus. Over Jesus. Remember he prayed and fasted for 40 days. The heavens did not open. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. The heavens did not open. Let me show you spiritual mysteries. But he submitted to the body of Christ. And his heavens opened. And the Spirit of God descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. And the Father spoke, saying, This is now my beloved Son. What was he before? My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And he prophesied to creation, Hear ye him. When he went to the desert, a crowd came. When he went up the mountain, a crowd came. Because a verdict under open heaven said, Hear ye him you cannot tell the world to hear you it will take another voice to say hear ye him hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are
want you here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain